What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that daily Ravens content, make sure to the subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time I put a brand new video. Now, in this video today, it's Mock Draft Monday. If you are new to the channel, new to the show, new to the series, every Monday in the offseason prior to the draft, I put out a seven-round no-trade Baltimore Ravens mock draft. This one, I did it on Mock Draft Machine on the Draft Network. Um, it was my first time doing it on that this year. Typically, in years past, it's been my favorite one. I'll try and do the next couple on there as well, uh, just to kind of get a good guide as to you know what I should use next year and things like that. We've only got, after this, I think only two more Mock Draft Mondays, which is scary uh, because that means the draft is here. But let me know in the comment section down below your guys' mock drafts. Let me know your thoughts on my players that I selected. And again, whenever I use a new mock draft machine or mock draft simulator, it's nice to see typically the first round players are, are similar, uh, but the later rounds, where do, where do these simulations have certain players going? Because I got players in this that in other simulations, maybe they have them going a lot earlier or they have them going a lot later and they have them graded higher. So it's always interesting. I always say I have to put my own personal um, thoughts into all these players and, you know, kind of analyze where I think they should go. Uh, but let's jump right into it. Uh, pick number 23. There were a few players available that I know Ravens fans really like. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Joey Porter Jr., Jordan Addison, um, and uh, Christian Gonzalez, all available um, at pick 23. Well, it's technically pick 22 because the Dolphins have a pick, but we're saying pick 23. That's how they, they situated. They just count 21 is nothing uh but you know the, these are all players that i think i'm i'm fine with the ravens drafting and we did just sign odell beckham jr and with us signing odell i don't think we should go wide receiver in round one you know if this was a different draft class and there was a wide receiver you know that i felt like could be a number one or um for this ravens team like yeah i would take them but this isn't that great of a draft class for the wide receiver position Again, if we drafted JSN or Jordan Addison, I'm not going to be upset. Uh, I wouldn't think it's a bad pick. But for me, I would much rather go to the cornerback position where we only have Marlon um, as a starter. And now, uh, then it comes down to Christian Gonzalez versus Joey Porter Jr. I'm putting a video out on play action football about it. Make sure to check him out. Um, well, I check them out. Check me out. Uh, that's my uh, overall NFL channel. We just do shorts, um, YouTube shorts and TikToks and stuff like that talking about it. But I'm putting out my top five cornerbacks today. Number one is Joey Porter Jr. All right. I think he's better and will be better from day one than Christian Gonzalez. So for me, that it was really a no-brainer. I saw Joey Porter Jr. He's my number one player for the Ravens to get. And if you guys don't know, the last two years, the Ravens have drafted my number one player for the Ravens to get. Last year, it was Kyle Hamilton. The year before that, it was Rashad Bateman. This year, it's Joey Porter Jr. Now, obviously, if Joey Porter Jr. is not there, my best available is going to be how I how I analyze that. Obviously, I wanted Sauce Gardner, but that wasn't going to happen last year. So it's the within reason. Um, if they're available, that's my number one player. Joey Porter Jr. is that guy for me this year. And there are, there's very few players I would take over him, like maybe three. <laughs> um, and, and one of them is going, should go first overall. He's probably going to go like third or fifth, which is Will Anderson. Um, I think Joey Porter Jr. is just stud. Man coverage corner, very similar to Marlon Humphrey, physical, um, and he can make plays. He, he's a good athlete. He does it all. Um, he's not going to get crazy interceptions. He's going to play the football. Uh, he's going to play the body of the wide receiver, and he's going to be physical. I think that sets the tone. I think, you know, his dad set the tone, and I think he can do it as well. Next up, uh, pick 82 or pick 87 in the draft, Raven's second pick. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read this. Oh, 82 is the rank on the system. Okay, sorry. New system. They changed out their layout from previous years. Uh, 87th overall pick. I went with Noah Sewell. Noah Sewell, linebacker out of Oregon. He was not the best available linebacker on their page, but I love Noah Sewell's game. Uh, I've been watching him at Oregon for the last couple of years. The brother of Panay Sewell, offensive tackle for the Detroit Lions, and he's just a baller. Like, anytime you watch the Oregon Ducks, um, it was Noah Sewell, right? And even when they had Kayvon Thibodeau, Noah Sewell was there. 
Like it wasn't like, oh, Thibodeau, Thibodeau, Thibodeau. It was Thibodeau and Sewell making plays when Sewell was healthy. That's one of the concerns um, is he hasn't been crazy healthy throughout his career uh, as an Oregon Duck. But, man, when he's on that football field, he's great. And the Ravens are yet to pick up the fifth-year option for Patrick Queen. So Noah Sewell would not be a day-one starter. Um, But I think drafting him as a, hey, if we don't keep Patrick Queen – Noah Sewell can be that number two linebacker for the Ravens. And, you know, we're in a spot where we don't, it's not like we need that much. Um, we could have gone wide receiver again. I don't love the wide receivers in this draft class. I was looking at them every round. I look at them and I'm like, I just don't think they're that valuable um, this year. You know, I think I've loved previous year's draft classes a lot more. Um, but next up, pick 125, I ended up going with a pass catcher. At the running back position, Mr. Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears out of Tulane, I think, is a, an unbelievable prospect. I think when you look at his game and what he's able to do, again, I've talked about it before. I think this is an incredible running back class, and Tajay Spears is a top five running back in this class. He's not number one. Number one is Bijan. He could be number two. I don't put him number two. I put him at three but he could be number two. If you're looking for somebody that is going to run the ball well and catch the football well and be able to line him up in the slot, that is Tajay Spears. And that's something I think the Ravens could do with him. Third down running back, put him in on third downs, throw him in the slot, throw him out wide, um, have him run routes, but also just have him be in the backfield. He's a playmaker. Get the ball in his hands. He's got great balance. He's able to do things um, that most players aren't able to do. And I love his game. Um, again, I, I like other running backs in this class as well. Uh, I love Dwayne McBride. I would be very happy if we drafted him. But Tajay Spears, I, I feel like, fits the Ravens a little bit better than Dwayne McBride if uh, we want to use him this year. And it looks like with the way that we signed Odell, the Ravens are going all in on this year. They want players that can that can help them. And, and if you go Noah Sewell in round three, you don't want to draft another player that's just going to ride the bench. Um, so I think Tajay Spears would actually get a lot of playing time. And I think he'd be really good. He's not going to be taking a ton of carries from J.K. Dobbins, but on third down, we may have two running backs in. Right? So, I, I love Tajay Spears. I think he'd be a really good player for the Ravens. Um, he's going to be a really good player wherever he goes. But next, I pick 159. I went with the offensive lineman, T.J. Bass, out of Oregon. And I typically don't like drafting players from the same school, but I felt like, hey, this is the best guy available at a position of need, which is left guard. He played left tackle in his career. He's played left guard. He's versatile. What do the Ravens love, especially in the offensive line? Guys, they can play in multiple spots, right? Patrick McCary, uh, Tyree Phillips. Those are two recent players. You know, we switched uh, our center all the way over the offensive line. He was a former uh, offensive guard, and then we draft Tyler Linderbaum. I feel like TJ Bass could be somebody that comes in and competes for that left guard spot because we don't know who's going to be the starter. And I think having depth that has a, the ability to play on the outside, not not with the intent of playing him on the outside, but like anytime you have depth where it's not restricted, like if you draft a guy and he can only play one position, it's tough for a depth piece because only if one player gets hurt can he play. If Hopefully it doesn't happen, but if maybe Ronnie Stanley goes down for like a couple of plays, maybe you could throw him out there. Um, you know, if if the right guard, Kevin Zeidler, goes down, maybe you could throw him out there. But I think he's coming in, he's competing for that left guard spot uh, with Mr. Big Sexy Ben Cleveland. But finally, pick 201, I went with Eku Leoda. I probably butchered that. I am sorry to him. Uh, edge rusher out of Auburn. He's a pass rusher. He's physical, he's athletic, and he's smart. Now, he's not crazy dominant by any means. This is a, a late-round draft pick. But at the same time, he's someone that I feel like can compete, right? We need players in the building that are going to push, whether it's starters or role players or bench players, to be better. And adding an edge rusher, I think, would be smart if we're doing it late. Right, I think we have David Ojabo and Adafi away. Those are the clear starters. But after them, when they need rest, someone like Iku Leota who could come in and, and, and be tactical and smart and hopefully develop into a good pass rusher, which the Ravens are very good at developing late-round pass rushers, 
I think it would be really smart for the Ravens to draft someone like that later on. I think it would be smarter to draft a late round edge rusher than it would be a wide receiver. Like that's my personal opinion uh, because we don't have a lot of depth and we have a lot of inexperience. So let's at least add depth to have one of those problems solved because I don't think we have the money to go out there and sign, you know, a, a veteran free agent edge rusher, unless maybe we bring back Justin Houston, which I would love or a JPP. I would love that as well. I just don't know exactly if that's going to happen. I'm going to run through the picks one more time. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on this draft class. Uh, but Joey Porter Jr., Noah Sewell, Tajay Spears, TJ Bass, and Eku Leota. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for Daily Ravens content, and I'll see all of you again tomorrow. Also, check out Play Action Football. I'll be posting on there later today as well.